couple of books in my library. They talk about the fanaticism in Texas. Any idea what the fanaticism is? Being a fanatic means what? Fanatic is one who is following with a very hardcore agenda. And also someone who goes to extremes. Radical. 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 And Paul uh, was Saul. Um, he's a, he was a fanatic. Fan. Okay. The this fanatics is, uh, in the holiness movement. Islam is very famous for this fanatics. Yeah. Now, his Hindu was are very famous. They take the law in their hands. But one of the fanatic reactions, or I shouldn't say one of the views that they held, was sinless perfection. So not only antinomian, observe, completely ignoring the law, they said this, I cannot sin. Whatever I do will never be a sin again. So they do all kinds of immoral things. We cannot agree in this. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to agree. And there were some holiness groups that became communitarian. I won't give you the details because we have a mixed audience here. I'd rather not talk about this. <laughs> Please. But, but there is a truth that these fanatics would be in a prayer meeting. And they would hear the Lord tell them. That woman over there is your new wife. And this was in holiness circles along with Pentecostals. That woman over there playing the piano is your future wife. That's the wife I wanted you to marry, but you made a mistake in marrying the other lady. So you need to get rid of her so you can marry the pianist. And not only do I want you to get married, but I want you to go to China as missionaries. The people were doing that. They felt the Spirit was speaking to them. That's the kind of fanaticism. And all kinds of terrible things were going on. Um, some people had gone to the extreme of not only feeling that they could not sin, but also they would not die. That was another heresy. That God has given me eternal life in this body, on this planet, so I cannot be killed. I'm Superman. So I will never die. I will be alive until Christ comes again. All kinds of heresies develop because of the fanaticism. So we have to be careful because he's actually aware of that. And I'm sure along the way he's, he met people like that. <coughs> Any questions so far? I'm having trouble seeing, turn to page 72. Page 72 at the next to uh, the third from the bottom paragraph. It says, the second thing necessary to keep the blessing of sanctification is obedience. And I am trying my best to find the first. Oh. Can you see it? Yeah, the first is faith. What page? I'm going it's, back to it. Yeah. Uh, number page 66. Oh, my. Yeah. Top paragraph. First complete paragraph. The first is faith. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. I was expecting it to be just a couple of doors away, but it's in the next neighborhood. No, it's quite a few. Okay, so this is how you keep your faith. How to keep it, number one, faith. We obtain sanctification by faith, but it is also retained by faith. Faith is the vital point of union with Christ, and of course, Satan makes his strongest of souls at this point. Doubting that I am sanctified, Page 72, we get to the second thing necessary to keep the blessing of sanctification. Number one, faith. So these, these kind of things will show up on the exam. So just write them in the, in the uh, margins. Number one, faith. Number two, obedience. obedience. 
And number three, what where do you see that? Number three is what page? 75. 75. Okay. What do you guys have? You have new glasses. I have no glasses. <laughs> the third essential is seen in the blood. So what's number one? Faith. Number two? Obedience. Obedience. Number three? Love. The blood. And is there a number four? No. We are at the end. Page 76. Amen. So we need to really keep those in mind. Faith, obedience, obedience and the blood. Love. For our own Christian life. <laughs> and as I was sharing with Alden, I sent him the copy of my article about Korean hymnody. And in that article, I mentioned again that American hymnals have gotten rid of the word blood from a lot of our hymnals. And a lot of that has to do with views of the atonement. A lot of it is feminist theology. Women are not comfortable with that. But if I were to ask you to find in your hymnal how many hymns there are that mention the blood, the more liberal the hymnals, the fewer there are. UFC has one. Would you be free from your burden of sin? Maybe that's the one. I don't know. I, to, I didn't bring my UFC hymnal. They don't, yeah. What can wash away my sin? I think we the blood of Jesus. Can make me whole again. I think we the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That's in the UFC. Okay, any questions about Beverly? He's the first man Beverly I've ever met. I've never met a man Beverly. I did meet a few Carols along the way. Carol O'Connor, if you remember that TV show. This was how many pages? 75. Seventy-six pages. This is not the whole book, though. The whole book, I've got it over here. The whole book is 283 pages. Remember to care about it. Can we take another 15-minute break? Yes. And then we'll come back and we'll get started and we'll continue in the morning with our textbook you will use for your discussion, debate, dialogue. So take a 15 minute break until 3.15. We'll be back and finish up by 4. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> I know. It's hard just to think. My body is in need of running an exercise at least two to three hours a day. What's the uh, uh, plan now? Never been in like this. Tomorrow plan in the morning we will uh, finish up the book. Yeah. And then also yeah, me too. in the afternoon we will have the exam, but the exam will only take at least only 30 minutes. So we will start this time doing the discussions. Tomorrow we so, have exam. so tonight. We need so to go today you need to make sure that. Tomorrow, tonight, go through the material. We need to prepare to tomorrow morning. And also start reading ahead of the textbook. So that thing went to the discussion. It's pretty heavy tonight. But it's heavy tonight because you guys do not have any outing except your personal journey, right? And going to shop. Tomorrow we are visiting the church? Yes, we're going tomorrow morning. Yes. 
I don't know. He's already been how many times? Three times, four times? This one. How far it is? It's quite a ways. It's yes. Rojo. It's an island on the river. We have a long trip. Well, maybe when you saw it went to Shindio, maybe it's similar, close by there. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Saturday morning, all three oh, yeah. Indians will leave from here at 4.30 to 5. We need a vehicle because we have to be in the airport at 6 because our flight, or, our flight is at 9 for them to Singapore and for me it's 10, 10, Cathay Pacific. Yeah, but I don't know. Nam was saying that He's not sure three hours is needed, three hours early, but whatever you want. Usually in India they say in the ticket, be in the airport three hours. Yeah. But here, how many? Two hours. Two hours, yeah. So two hours in America. At least by seven. If you leave by five, five thirty, it will be good. Yes. Because you will go to bed late because we have the party and then you have to pack. We have a big party. Saturday? Friday night. After graduation. Oh, we go out. I think it will probably be a buffet. That's the one sponsored by the mission. KHC mission. So who sponsored the one that we went out with? Oh, and that's. I don't know that. There was a meal we had with the KDA. Oh, well, that was a morning breakfast. So we can talk about that. But we usually have two of the larger. Yeah, yeah. Right. So Susan did the one on Monday night. So either one's at the beginning. Yes, that's what you said. One's at the beginning, one's at the end. They alter depending on Susan's schedule. Sometimes she's here for the day. Of gratitude and thanks to the OMS Please. I met him in Chennai, in Bangalore. <coughs> the new president. Jeff. Yes. Yeah. Edwards. He's a good man. Yeah, very good man. And, uh, I consider him a personal yeah. friend. Yeah. Yes. President General Secretary. Yeah. Yeah. President. And Dick Free. My friend Dick. Yes. That is a very good picture. Yeah. It's a, 39th conference and 40th. We are going to you host look in very the, good. Yeah, it's my and you are all in white. As far as I know, this is with the Father Bishop. So is this because you're preaching? No, no, I'm attending the conference. I've attended in my cultural dress. You know? And he has given me this gift. He has brought all the way from uh, US. Why must president? I am having that in my office. This is the ECA Board of Governors Executive. Uh -huh. With the new president. That is the new president. Uh, oh, here. Yeah, here. And my friend, Cody Upman. Tom. Dick. Dick. Rogers. Everyone was there. We had a good time together all together. I'm sure you did. Good people. They're connected with the godly people. Amen. Did you bring your computer? Yeah, I have that. I have my you have your laptop? Okay. Well, in some of the... Some of the
This is Bev LaHaye's testimony. I asked God to fill me with the Holy Spirit and do the impossible thing through me by this new power within. No outward sign or expression except for a beautiful, quiet peace that settled in my heart and the new confidence that God was going to do something far better with my life than I had been able to do. That's Jim LaHaye's wife? Yeah. they have discovered they have an well, evening have. commitment, but they'll still come right after class is over with on Thursday, and I suggest that you just go to E-Mart, and then they can go to their 6.30 meeting afterwards, and we can walk back. They have a vehicle? Yeah, they'll take us there. I'm sure they've got the OMS vehicle. Oh, I'm sure everybody drives it. One of my notes, too, that I will copy you on that I'll be sending to Susan. She says her mother is declining, and they're getting ready now to move her mother to the house that they're talking about. On hospice, probably. Not hospice. She didn't say hospice yet. So, but, you know, they were moving her to that. Right. But yeah. I'm finding out hospitals sometimes like Ben I was talking about she turned 99 this Sunday. She's been on hospice at home for the last, I would say, eight months. And you go in there and she's all perky. She's sitting in the hospital. She's sitting in the hospital bed. She's not supposed to get out of bed. She's watching TV, but she's very alert and perky. And she does have some memory issues with all the not sure what the dynamics are. Well, in, in our state, and I think it depends on the state, in our state, you can, you have to have a diagnosis that you could die within six months. And then you go on hospice. But once you're on hospice, if something happens, you live longer, you stay on hospice. So, but a lot of people don't want to go on hospice because then you don't go to the hospice. You don't have your doctor. You pick up the hospice doctor. So, and you're... There's, unless they changed it in our state, once you go on hospice, heroic measures do not happen. So, they call that the operations living will or advanced directives. Advanced directives. Yeah. It's, it's completely, I did the living will program and I did that maybe about 15 years ago when we were in the state, and then we, when she gets to the point where she's not able to do much, right? And they asked me about that. I said, got the your well here, but I and they said, what about advanced directives? And I looked at the comparison of the documents. Wow, this is a lot more sophisticated and detailed. Living will was pretty much just one page. Yeah, the advanced directive, and you have to have it witnessed at least in our state. We had had it had to get it notarized. Your, your future you find in most banks. Yes. Let's use Jeff because it wasn't. If, if Jeff was your, uh, was your academic mean, he answers to you. But in reality, you answer to him. Yeah. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. yeah. And, and it doesn't sound like that's going to change. If, uh, if Eli would become the field director, and you 
that we're his boss in the seminary, and he's your boss in the field. Um, there has to, it doesn't mean it can't work, it just means some lines are going to have to be clear. <coughs> Things that I've always said to uh, situations like this is, you know, when you put all the cards on the table, you quit. It can be very transparent both ways. So, so if the field director is in charge, for instance, of, of the resource of that building, and so all of the money is the Facilities goes into the field, field trade, and you get some of it to operate. Um, then where does you know, where is your authority? You know, where is your bargaining authority? Where is your you know the, 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 the more of it needs to come in, or or the, you get your monopoly. somewhat of an idea of, of what your operating dollars are and how much of that comes out of the building and its rents and, and the users and all of those things. So if you don't know that, or if that could change it any time given, you know, given certain things, that's not fair to you. Somebody who wants to be a student, I don't know, they're going to be just saying, and by the time it's really bad, 
Because I don't think they want to be there. The president, the, the graduation time, yeah, you can see the way it's laid out. So. Yeah, I saw the, I saw the program. But I don't think yeah. anybody from the seed department is there. So have you talked to Will since you got here? I haven't talked to Will for the week Yeah, I, because I'm just afraid that you've only got three more days. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things. So I'm just not who they are. I don't know who they are. Yeah, exactly. Where, where they are. <laughs> are they in this building? Are they, you know, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I think the, not all the faculty you know, are here. Yeah. Because the man I met with yesterday said that they're still in three different locations or where. Will used to have his office, and then there's still another section. So there's three different places where faculty have offices. So I just, I'm just concerned. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm wondering. I mean, I don't understand my background. Which conference would you require to receive the show? I'm not sure in five years. Yes, the institution of support. The institution of support. The they are the ones that are the people in New York. Are we in? There might have been a chance. That's that true. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. It's, no, it's, it's every, 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 every area. area. It's it's with the negative dean or I don't know who's the president. When the same goes to the Kansas City, now we have one split. His leadership is those are the people. Kansas used to have two. Because it seems like this one was in Nebraska. Is the uh, uh, South jurisdiction of all of our other Yes, that's right. I think it was a good. Yeah, the North South West 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 one too. I mean, it's all of these, basically all of the New, New York, except the way they have set out, I'll probably use my content. This is a nice feature. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, but that really doesn't matter. It's a minor point. I'm just not sure how much more I can go on with my official status. Is that what you're thinking last time? Well, I just affiliated. So, I think what Will said is that they have to do with that. Okay, because. I heard Will talking to you about the CD. I heard you. 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 Just a moment. It's just good to have some time. Southwest disaster. Thoughts? But probably your wife's going to be staying here. Well, well, we'll discuss that when we, we determine when we get July. We came to rescue you and you were already rescued. <laughs> we'll have clear minds. So, so I'm not terribly used to my wife. Obviously, I'll be available. She definitely feels better comfortable on the stuff. But I don't know. I think getting oil put on all those videos is the next step. Well, I'm and just wondering if you want to meet with people, not just the academic dean, but people doing with their computers, computers the tech school. Right. Had to figure that out. Had to figure out jobs. There's a lot to arrest there. I said, I, you know, I'm not sure so if it's context. context. As I understand it, you're just going to stay. Thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. Three thousand the church and three thousand students in school and they give me the highest rating evaluation for my students. And I don't know how the DS figured that out when they had the meeting. So you'll be here when Dr. Kim comes, the prof that's coming. And we can talk to him about that too. And just say, okay, you guess the presentation. But they their their starts are going to be totally different conversation. And they have a graduate dean, they have another grad dean. So the grad dean is going to be well, I think after know. all of that. And then the question is what do you do, what can we possibly provide them in the situation? What kind of support do you besides money? Yeah. Congregations. Yeah. yeah, besides just the yes. If they have more than we do, if I can kind of keep them in distance. Probably. And also I Well they would say no, they don't. Well I know. I mean, <laughs>
And we would say no. I did send it. They do. You never respond. I'm much more certified. Person has I'm quite to comfortable in meeting they, 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 will, they will come back that, and they will say, that especially signature that knows what the needs are, or someone that knows how we can get the information. Even though it's safe, they can't make sure that we build relationships. Well, Moses has said he's still Carry coming, so he'll system. be here at four, and he'll be massive too because I told him I'm massive. I did get the so, I don't want to Moses Kim. Oh, Moses Lowell. So he's one of the professors, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. I lost you somewhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I, I had a meeting with a professor yesterday, a meeting with a professor today. But the meeting today, I'm sure. Yeah, he'll come by the room. Yeah. So I have a few issues. You may want to just have personal touch on all the stuff that's trying to get done. Well, I want to make sure he's, you guys need yeah. him. Yeah. I mean, Will knows him already. Because we're turning a lever to make sure that they're not in that. Yeah, I've been uh, like, you know, like the rest of us. No, he hasn't been here yet. So this is not the right thing. The same Moses picture of the organization. They're unresponsive. Was there a Moses here? A loop. Was it there a Moses here? No. Well, if his name was Moses, it's a different it's not a, Okay, because I thought he was Moses. Yeah. That other one. This, this guy, what's his role? Well, he's the head of the I have to check my name card. He was working. Well, he's the head of the Wesleyan Institute. But I don't have to read the whole thing, which will take it home. And you'll have this <laughs> We can ask him. So if you, you have, have a name card with you, do you have a name card? Yeah. Give him a name card, you'll get a name card back. Answer yeah. all your questions. So actually, I don't actually, remember. I don't, I don't have the new name card yet, but I still have my global director of leader and Good. development. So you know, I'll just explain to him that roles have changed, but contact I'm still in that leader between the contact will be the Well, okay, let's go ahead and get back, and we won't be able to get too far in this, but at least we can get a start. This textbook here, remember, has five views, and I'll I'm sorry this is all messed up, but it's uh, not a good picture. But this is the author of the chapter that we have on the Wesleyan perspective, Melvin E. Beaver. And it says he passed away in 2018, December 2018. I met him in 1998, so 20 years before he passed, I met him in person. He was actually one of the respondents for my paper. WTS. There are actually two books that are, and they're both similar. One exactly says sanctification, the other one says something like spirituality. So Mel Dieter writes a chapter on the Wesleyan view in this book. The other book, the person who writes the chapter for the Wesleyan view is Lawrence Wood. Yes. From Asbury. I think he's retired now. Pentecostal Grace or something? Yeah. yeah. And so he has, he, he, he likes to emphasize Fletcher over Wesley, or that's his specialty. He's, he's talking about Wesley. But anyway, I think Mel Dieter does the better job in his Wesleyan perspective. So we have to understand there are some points. Turn to page seven. Page seven, just the introduction forward. As much as we might see differences, there are similarities. And what does the editor say the similarity is on page seven? First, all of these people, these authors, agree that the Bible teaches 
a sanctification that is past, present, and future. So sanctification is definitely part of the Christian life. Past, present, and future. And second, look down about four lines. Second, all agree that the process of sanctification requires believers to strive to express God's love in their experience. Of course, as you know, the, this is a more broad view, and it's actually not embraced by all. Some would like to be more specific and narrow it down a bit, and some people are even a little bit, to be honest with you, we'll get to this the last lecture time. The language of love sounds good, and John Wesley used it a lot, but with some of the Wesleyans after... <coughs> Miss Winkoop. Winkoop? Winkoop, is that how it's pronounced? Uh, she, she was actually from the Pacific Northwest. And I knew Bangs Winkoop. I knew her brother, Carl. I met him in Kansas City. He was teaching at St. Paul. He's the Arminius expert. Yes, he is. And he did his, his dissertation on Arminius at the, I guess, University of Chicago. I mean, Martin Martin. Anyway, uh, her book, Theology of Love, was a complete paradigm shift. <coughs> complete paradigm shift for the whole of Spirit. And I have heard some people say it, I'm not going to say their names, that they were ready to leave the holiness movement until they read that book. Mildred Weinkoop. What, Weinkoop? Weinkoop. Weinkoop. Just like drinking wine. I have to remember wine. Okay. Evelyn. Mildred Weinkoop, or Bangs Weinkoop, I think we're at Weinkoop is a very It completely shifts the focus away from sin and the eradication of sin in the person's life to a new, renewed emphasis on love. And that has, that was started, I guess you wrote that book, if I remember right, back about 1971, 72. Like I said, it was a paradigm shift. And it's gone to the point where it's been embraced by, I guess you can call them Nazarenes. It's controversial now because some people are calling these people to be defrocked. Thomas J. Ord is one of them, who was formerly a professor at Northwest in Nampa, Idaho. People are asking for him to be defrocked as a Nazarene pastor because he believes in pretty much what he would call universalism. Mm -hmm. And this is the step ahead that people have taken. And of course, you know some of the, uh, oh, Rob, <coughs> what's his last name? Love wins. Oh, Bob. Uh, uh, Rob Bell, thank you. And he wrote that book. And so a lot of these books are embracing what we call universalism, which has never been a standard part of evangelicalism or a standard part of church history. Everyone has recognized universalism as an aberration of Christian theology. What's universalism? Now, I'll be honest, at Trinity, I had a couple of professors, Harold O.J. Brown was one of them, and he thought all Wesleyan Arminians were universalists. I said, Dr. Brown, you misunderstand. We believe in universal atonement, but we are not believers in universalism. Universal atonement means Christ died for all. That's the breadth of redemption. Christ died for all, not just for the elect, but for all. But universalism is all will be saved, including Satan. Maybe yes. Yes, in the early church there was Origen. He was an advocate of, of universalism. Satan will be reconciled with God. He'll be in heaven next to you. He'll be seated on, on the seat right next to you. And everybody, everyone will be in heaven because God could never, a God of love could never send anyone to hell. And of course, some of the more evangelical people say, well, of course, you send yourself to hell because you refuse the free offer of salvation from the Lord. So it's not that God's sending you to hell. It's that you're sending yourself to hell. But anyway, universalism is, is one of the extreme aberrations of holiness. So we have to be aware of that. And then we have also on page 8, 
at the top, but how does one achieve success in sanctification? So we've got some commonalities, but we also have some distinctions, differences. How does one achieve success in sanctification in this life? And how much success is possible? Is a crisis experience following one's conversion normal or necessary? If so, what kind of experience and how is it verified? As will be obvious, the authors disagree in their answers to these questions. In evaluating the evident differences, the reader must know carefully the respective definitions of key biblical terms, especially sin, old man, new man, perfect, and the spirit, baptism, as well as the Wesleyan term, as the Wesleyan term, entire sanctification. And I'm sorry, I have a note here. You know what that note is? It's not a Wesleyan term, it's a biblical term. I have 1 Thessalonians 5.22. Holy sanctified, I believe, is the same as entire sanctification. Correct, Dr. Vermillion? Mm -hmm. Your whole spirit, soul, and body, that would be entire. <laughs> oh. Yeah, entire and whole are the same. So it actually, I think, is a biblical expression, not just something that Wesley or the holiness movement came up with. So we go on to the first chapter, and how many pages will you need to read? Mm -hmm. The actual chapter is 46 pages, actually 37 pages. <coughs> and from each position paper, each perspective, there is a response, a response to Dieter. And each person takes their turn talking about what they think Dieter is saying that's helpful and what he's saying that's not so helpful and how they agree with Dieter and how they disagree. So that's part of the thing that you read these chapters, you can see. And this will help you prepare your paper so you can see, for example, if you selected the reform perspective, you can go all <laughs> the way through and see what the reform perspective says about each position, but more more specifically see what they said about Dieter. So the reform view, the response to Dieter by Anthony Pokema on page 47 talks about the reformed view. And that, I tell you, these two or three pages are loaded with scripture. Nothing better than a Christian conversation We're using the Bible and I think that's helpful, but of course we understand that sometimes people misinterpret or have a different view of the Bible. They're sometimes throwing Bible verses at each other doesn't work in getting God's purpose done. Okay, so you've got your positions, you've signed up, you've got your worksheet. Yes. So I will go ahead and let you leave a little bit early. Why? Okay. Because some of you need to read and be prepared to start presenting your positions. But again, it's a conversation. It's not a formal presentation. So you can also use your book. I don't know if you were allowed we to. We can put our own uh, understanding here. What's that? Oh, after reading this? Yes. So we will talk in the morning about the Wesleyan view in more detail. And then we will invite others to address their view mm -hmm. and compare it with the Wesleyan view. So we will have a conversation slash discussion. Interaction. 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 It will not be a debate, a formal debate, and it will not be hate speech. I'll, I'll leave this comment in closing. When I was at the Nazarene Theological Seminary, remember I was not Nazarene, I was a new kid. I had no clue what the holiness movement was, mm. but I learned after a while. And I'll never forget Paul Bassett passed away just a few years ago, was the main professor of church history, and I took every class that he offered. And I remember in several classes, students would start raising their hand and talk about Calvin, and more specifically, they would be talking about Calvinism. And well, Calvinists say this, Calvinists say that, Calvinists say this. And Dr. Bassett got very upset. I would say he was angry for hearing students just bash Calvin. <coughs> and he said this, 
the rest of the semester, you will not be allowed to mention the name of John Calvin <laughs> until you have read both volumes of the Institutes for the Christian Religion. Yes. <laughs> so how much more do you think we've heard about Calvin? Zero. Zero. Golden silence. Silence is golden. <laughs> but I, re I actually, when I went to Trinity, I had the opportunity, the requirement of reading both volumes. And I found out that what people in that classroom were saying bad about Calvin and Calvinism, Calvin had some good points, especially about prayer. I mean, when I read the Institutes, he has large sections about spirituality, about prayer, about reaching out to God. So it wasn't all that bad. But, yeah. So that's how you get people to be quiet. Did you read the book? No. Get, get the book, read it, then you can talk. So we'll see you tomorrow. And thank you so much for your yeah. patience. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You are ready to go, huh? Some of you have appointments. Let me switch off this camera. Oh,